Hey student armies, welcome back to Diksha Vedantu channel. This is your master teacher Navya and in today's session we will be covering the entire plant kingdom. Right? So in this one particular session I will be explaining about all uh, the you know under plant kingdom there are so many divisions right. I will be covering each and every division in this one particular session itself. Okay, so yeah, before uh, starting today's session, once I would like to confirm that, am I audible? Is my voice clear students? Let me check once. Let me check. Yes. So yeah, I hope I'm audible and okay. So and my PPT is also clearly visible, right? Okay, so yeah students and one more thing, I have got an interesting and amazing information for you all, especially for those students who are targeting KCET 2024. That is, the Diksha is launching a test series, KCET test series at a special offer price of 499. Okay, so at 499, the Diksha is you know, launch this KCT test series. And this test series is going to boost your preparation, right? So, don't waste your time and get yourself enrolled for this test series. And the link for this test series, the link to get yourself enrolled for this test series is provided in the description. So, the interested students can, you know, grab this opportunity, right? Okay, fine. So, yeah, like I have told you, let's get started with this plant kingdom. Okay. So, students, already you all would have studied, you all have studied this concept plant kingdom in your class 9th itself. Do you remember? There was this chapter that is the diversity in living organism. In the diversity of uh, living organism chapter, you, you studied about uh, the classification, right? The importance of classifying living organism, right? So, wherein you studied that, yes, initially it was Aristotle. He was the first person to classify living organism into three categories. But unfortunately, his classification was failed. It was not widely accepted. Why? Because he didn't consider certain criteria for classifying living organism. Right? That's why his classification failed. Because see, I told you now, he, uh, yes, he divided living organism based on their habitat. Whereas their food habits, their body organization and what is the cell nature, cell type, all those, you know, criteria were not included in that Aristotle classification. That's why his classification failed. And later it was R.H. Whittaker who classified the living organism into five category and that classification is widely known as five kingdom classification. So, you have already studied about this five kingdom classification in your class 9th itself in the diversity in living organism chapter, right? So, do you all remember that concept? Do you all remember the chapter? I have already explained that in when I was doing that class 9th, uh, when I was explaining class 9th chapters, right? So, now, Whatever you have studied in your class 9th, whatever you have studied in your class 10th, yes, you will be studying the same concepts in your class 11th and 12th, but now you are going to study really in depth. So, what you studied in your class 9th and 10th is like introduction part. And now what you are going to study in your class 11th and 12th is actually the real game. Okay. Right. Yes, yes. So, you remember Ishwar. Right. So now, like you all know, see your kingdom uh, fungi, kingdom monera, protesta, that comes under one chapter. Now your plant kingdom itself is one entire chapter and your animal kingdom itself is one entire chapter, right? So in this session, we'll be starting with kingdom planting and then we'll study about the other division that falls under this kingdom planting, that is your thallophyta, bryophyta, tadophyta, gymnosperm and angiosperm in depth, okay? Fine. So, let's get started with our plant kingdom, kingdom planting. So, here, how are the living organisms that are present in this kingdom planting? All are, you know, what is the nature of the cell? It is eukaryotic. Body organization, it is, you know, the it is multicellular, right? And then 
what is their mode of nutrition it is autotrophic and here plant cell they have cell wall right so these are eukaryotic chlorophyll containing organism commonly called as plants see they prepare their own food their autotrophs how are they preparing see and again i had already explained you when i was doing that uh, you know the light reaction and dark reaction concept i told you know that uh, you know again under autotrophs there are two types there are two types one is photo autotroph and the second one is chemo autotrophs right hi amu hi yeah so photo autotrophs are those organism yes they prepare their own food and what is their energy source from where are they getting that energy it is from sunlight so photo autotrophs whereas what about chemo autotrophs those organism yes they prepare their own food and to prepare that food from where are they getting energy they are getting energy from the they are deriving energy from the chemical reaction that's why they are called as chemo autotrophs okay clear with that so now in kingdom plant you have all are either eukaryotic and they are chlorophyll containing organism they are commonly called as plants okay there was this question which was being asked see your fungi even fungi has got cell wall the fungi also you know uh, like it is eukaryotic cell it is multicellular organism but then why is fungi not placed in kingdom plantae why is it placed separately can anyone give me the reason that why kingdom fungi why the fungi are placed in a separate kingdom and not with plants i want the reason comment your answers in the comment section okay fine and yeah first before getting into the classification of this kingdom plantae see kingdom plantae is further divided right into several division before that let's understand some of the uh, features of uh, kingdom plantae right see the plants are mostly non motile you all know right it is fixed in one particular place they cannot move from one place to another place and they are being anchored to the substratum what do you mean by substratum nothing but a support they want see here uh, see just like that do you think the plant can grow just like that no right it wants sunlight it want water and what is the support system soil right and with the root grows and it holds the soil particle so tightly and even they will get grip in turn and what about lichens you would have seen right see lichen also see lichen does not fall under this category it does not fall under any of the kingdom because i've already told you that lichen it is a symbiotic association of fungi as well as algae right but then for them also to grow they require support they want a surface right that is substratum so here the plants also they are fixed in one particular place and then they want a support for them to stand in that one particular place and then some some plants are you know freely floating in the fresh or sea water see majority of the plants yes they require support whereas there are certain plant families which are actually freely floating you can see them in marine water see they are not fixed to one particular uh, surface they are freely floating in the water bodies right so you get to see plants uh, you know non motile as well as you get to see plants which are also freely floating in the fresh water or sea water as well okay and then how is the growth in plant it is indefinite right and new parts are continuously added throughout the life you agree with this right and this concept has been already explained in your tissue chapter class 9th so in tissue chapter that in your class 9th you had this tissue chapter wherein you all would have studied right that in plant the growth is indefinite why why the growth in plant is indefinite and students i still didn't get answer for this question i had asked you this question right that hi ishwar hi c students i had asked you this question right that why fungi is not placed in kingdom plantae why tell me the answer for this and also i want you all to answer that why the growth in plant in indefinite because already you have studied this concept in your class 9th tissue tissue chapter in case if you da, don't remember the concept it's okay fine i can explain it to you now see one reason that why uh, the main reason why fungi is not placed in kingdom plantae is that 
See fungi, yes, they have cell wall. They are eukaryotic cell. They are eukaryotic cell. It can be uh, multicellular. It is multicellular mostly and it can exist in unicell. Some rare species are there. And see, they have cell wall. Plants also have cell wall. But then what is the mode of nutrition of plants? It is autotrophic. Whereas fungi, it is heterotrophic. Fungi, the mode of nutrition is heterotrophic. Okay. Particularly, it is saprophytic. What do you mean by saprophytes or saprophytic mode of nutrition? Here, the organism, it derives its food from dead or decayed material, decayed matter. That's why it is saprophytic. Its mode of nutrition is saprophyte. So, the mode of nutrition varies. Uh, the kingdom, uh, the fungi, their mode of nutrition is saprophytic. Whereas plant, it is autotrophic. That is the reason. And now, why growth is indefinite? very simple see the reason is very simple you know right see we human beings we grow till certain age uh, let's say girls they grow till 18 years and boys till 21 year right whereas plants it's not like that see you cut a part let's say that you cut the branch again it has the capacity to grow and they have the capacity to grow throughout their lifetime why it's because of the presence of Presence of meristematic tissue, meristematic, meristematic tissues. So the plants, they have meristematic tissues. Yes, they feed on dead body. Yes, that is true. It is unlimited. Why? Because they have meristematic tissue. Now, what do you mean by meristematic tissue? See, meristem, it is a Greek word which means to divide. Which means to divide. So, in plants in certain regions like uh, at the tip of the stem, tip of the root and even in the, uh, you know, around the vascular bundles and even uh, above the internode or below the internode, there are these meristematic tissues that are present. In meristematic tissues, the cells, the cells, they keep on dividing. They divide rapidly. That's the reason why plants, they have the capacity to grow throughout their lifetime. Even if one particular part is cut, again it has the capacity to regrow that part. It's because of the presence of meristem. Yes, Sishwar, it is correct. Yes, it is because of meristem. Okay, clear with that? Fine. And also in plant, you all have studied this also in your class 9th itself. See, all these plant kingdom chapter which is there in your class, 11th, these concepts you have already, the basics of these concepts is been covered in your class 9th itself. See, in your class 9th, there was, yes, yes, they divide continuously, correct, that is the right answer. See, in your class 9th, you have already, you had this chapter, cell, the fundamental unit of life chapter, right, wherein you have already studied that in plant cell, there is a big vacuole which is present in the center. Whereas in animal cell, yes, vacuoles are present but very small. And what are the other differences that you noticed in plant kingdom and uh, plant cell and animal cell? One is plant cell has cell wall, whereas animal cell does not have any cell wall. And plant cell has got plastids, whereas animal cells doesn't have plastid. And one more important feature was that, yes, plant cell, they have large central vacuole. What is the function of this large central vacuole? Why do plant cell have a large vacuole whereas animal cell don't have large vacuole? Yeah, prokaryote and eukaryote, yes, that concept is, yeah. But then here you know, right, all uh, the fungi, plants, animals, they have eukaryotic cell only. Yes, animals, they don't have cell wall. Yeah, true. Now this, the vacuole that is there. The function of this vacuole, see, you know, right, the plant, it is fixed in one particular place. It cannot move from one place to another place, right? Whereas animals, they can move from one place to another place for shelter, for food, and also to protect themselves, right? Whereas plants can't do that. So what do plants do? They prepare their own food. Now, let's say that they, they have prepared extra food. Then where will plants store that extra food? See, because they cannot keep it outside like animals. See, if they want, they eat. And then the remaining will be left as it is. Again, later they can come, come and have that. Whereas plants can't do that. So what do plants do is that they prepare their food and the excess food will be stored in the vacuoles. 
and also the water will be stored in vacuole itself. That's why plants have a they uh, they have a large central vacuole. That is one reason. And second reason is that this vacuole it provides the turgidity to the cell. It provides the rigidity and turgidity so, to the cell so that it will help. It will help in maintaining that plant cell structure. This large vacuole it stores food and it also it provides turgidity and rigidity to the cell which will help in maintaining the structure of the plant cell. Hi, hi, good afternoon. Okay. Next. Then their mode of nutrition is have been explaining uh, since I have started, right? Yes, it is autotrophic. The mode of nutrition is autotrophic, right? The reserve food material, the, uh, the reserve food material is starch. See, the thing is, yes, they prepare their food. The plants, they prepare their food. Uh, through photosynthesis process right and like after photosynthesis see glucose will be synthesized they utilize that glucose after they in case let's say they have prepared excess of glucose then that glucose has to be stored for the further use so the glucose when it is a uh, now let's say it has to be stored so before storing that glucose the glucose will be converted into starch and then that will be stored in the plants Okay, so this is that's what it says. The reserve food material is starch. Okay, now let's say that yes, now plants want to derive energy. So what do they do? They convert this starch into glucose, and then the glucose will be broken down to derive energy. How is glucose broken down? Which process is in what? It is respiration. And plant belong. It is a multicellular organism. It belongs to higher category. So aerobic respiration takes place in plants. You all have already studied this, right? Okay, so now I want you all to answer to this question. See here, all the members of kingdom plants are autotropes. Is this true or false? See, is this true or false? All the members of kingdom plants are autotropes. Do you agree with this? So since the beginning of this uh, session, I have been explaining that yes, I have been explaining the features of plants and I have also been uh, comparing your syllabus with the class 9th and 10th just to show that yes you have already studied all these in your class 9th and 10th itself but then it was a bit basic and now what you are going to study is going to be vast concept right. So yeah is it option A or option B? It's very simple yes it is option A. Okay. So, and yes, plants also they reproduce, right? Even uh, sexually as well as asexually, right? The asexual reproduction also you have already studied in your class 10th itself. The vegetative propagation is a type of asexual reproduction in plants. And also plants reproduce sexually also. If the seed formation is there, let's say plants hibiscus, you have seen that, right? It had both male and female, uh, the or reproductive organ, right? The uh, anther, pistil, right? So, in plants also you get to see a sexual and asexual reproduction, right? Okay. So, now I hope I have, you know, clarified all your, you know, the basics of plant kingdom. Like I just spoke about uh, the, you know, uh, the features of plants before getting into the plant kingdom in depth, okay? So, now let's see that how kingdom plant is classified. And students, you all know, right, that how that five kingdom classification is done, on what basis it is done, you all know, right, it is based on the nature of cell, uh, whether uh, the cellularity is being observed, the mode of nutrition, body organization, all this is been, based on that, the five kingdom classification is done. Again, under these kingdoms, there are further divisions that you will get to see. For plants, the further classification, the further groups are called as division, whereas for animals, it is called as phylum. Okay, so now kingdom planting. So, see, there are two things that you should keep in mind one is cryptogams, and the other one is phanerogams. Cryptogams are those plants which, uh, which does not produce seed, they are seedless plants, whereas your phanerogams, these are 
seed bearing plants which means to say that yes these plants they give us fruit they give us flowers and all that when as this one they does not produce any see any fruit that they does not give us any fruits or flowers okay so now how is this classification actually done there are three criteria that you will have to keep in mind the first thing is whether the body is differentiated or undifferentiated the second thing is okay let's say if the body is differentiated okay okay the body is differentiated and the second thing what you're going to check is okay the body is differentiated next thing that you will have to check is whether the vascular tissue is present or absent and now let's say the plant body is differentiated and vascular tissue is also present then the third thing that they are going to check is they will check if the plants produce seed or not even if the plants produce seed again and again it is further divided into whether the seeds let's say the plant is plant's body plant's body is differentiated and you know they have vascular tissue that is the xylem and phloem is there the xylem is there to conduct water whereas phloem is present to you know uh, you know to translocate the food and then the third thing that you're going to check is you will check if the plant produce seed or not right let's say the plants yes they are seed bearing plant then what are you going to check is that okay the plant they bear seed are these are those seed embedded within fruit or are they not embedded within fruit you're going you will check that let's say if the seeds are embedded within the fruits then it is angiosperm let's say that okay seeds are not present within the fruits the seeds are they are naked they are present outside then they fall under gymnosperm okay these these two are seed bearing plants but here the seeds are naked in case of angiosperm the seeds are present within the fruit and then again under angiosperm there are two types that is dicot and monocot okay what do you mean by dicot dicot is nothing but okay now the seed is present within the fruit and the seed has got two cotyledons see cotyledon is the one which nourishes the embryo in the in its developing stage okay so these seeds those seeds which has got two di, two cotyledon they fall under dicot and then the seeds having one cotyledon they fall under monocot clear with that this is how the plant kingdom is classified see here this thallophyta this is undifferentiated let me write it down thallophyta here plant body is undifferentiated it is un undifferentiated which means to say that here the plant body is not differentiated into root stem or leaf it is just thread like structure best example is algae and then in bryophyta what happens is that yes plant body is differentiated it is differentiated but no vascular bundle no vascular tissue but there is no vascular tissue okay and here in pteridophyta yes the plant body is differentiated okay vascular tissue is also present but then the no seed they do not produce any seed such plants fall under pteridophyta see here all these three do not produce seed right in common these three does not produce seed that's why they fall under this category whereas in this case yes plant body is differentiated and here they have vascular tissues the xylem and phloem is present and then they also produce seed that's why they fall under phanerogams clear with the students do you have any doubts till now in case if you have any doubts feel free to comment in the comment section okay fine see here the plant body is not well differentiated the plant body does not possess vascular tissue and here the explanation it's given over here okay example for thallophyta i told you the best example is algae algae as well as lichen is also example for thallophyta but then keep this in mind students lichen does not belong to any kingdom they are present separately so let's not consider this example so algae is a thallophyta and then uh, bryophyta is a liverwort uh, mosses hornwort these are the example for your bryophyta and pteridophyta it is ferns 
okay and then gymnosperm is cycad evergreen all these are example for your gymnosperm yes uh, sujita ma'am gymnosperm can produce fruit yes yes they produce fruits but then no these are you would have seen no it is very rare they producing seed seed is very rare fruit is very rare they only have seeds which will help in uh, reproduction that's it they you don't get uh, the flowers or fruits much in this uh, under this uh, category it is even if it is it is very rare rare species but mostly you will see uh, the uh, you know fruits flower producing plants under gymnosperm not under angels uh, not under angiosperm you get to see plants producing fruits and flowers whereas under gymnosperm it is very very rare but then yes they produce seeds and those seeds are present outside the you know plant body like the fruit it's not actually the exact fruit they will have cone like structure you would have seen evergreen uh, trees like the coniferous tree you would have seen right over there you would have noticed that cone like structure outside anyway as we go further i will show you the diagram okay gymnosperm mostly no they don't uh, uh, produce fruit or flower as such we cannot use them okay yes hi hi student good afternoon okay now see the vascular bundles are not found in pterodophytes or bryophytes yeah welcome sujata sujita yes so now vascular bundles are not found in pterodophytes or bryophytes see in both the cases uh, the plant body is differentiated yes now do they have vascular tissues or not which one does not have vascular tissue yes it is option b correct okay which is the most simple and primitive plant group so now you saw right how the plant kingdom is further categorized into several divisions so out of those divisions out of those five division which is that one division that had very simple and primitive uh, plant group wherein you didn't see much of development can you type uh, your answer in the comment section which is that group that had the simple and primitive plant no it's not bryophyte because bryophyta the plant body is differentiated the plant uh, in bryophyta the plant have leaf like structure they have stem like structure yeah they don't have roots but then they have root like structure that is called as uh, rhizopus yeah it's not bryophyte the first one which i told you the example is algae i gave an example also so algae belongs to which division in the plant kingdom it is thallophyta thallophyta is that uh, division in the kingdom plantae whose body is not differentiated into leaf stem or root and yeah it is not differentiated so obviously they will not have vascular tissues also right that is you would have seen algae spirogyra the best example the plant body is just thread like structure and they are entangled it is just one thread like structure but then why is it why does it fall under kingdom plantae okay here plant body is not at all differentiated into root stem or leaf they don't have vascular tissues also but still they are considered uh, as plants they fall under kingdom plantae why the answer is very simple it's because the nature of the cell is eukaryotic it is multicellular the cells have cell wall and here they also have chlorophyll pigment which plays very important role in preparing their own food that is photosynthesis that's why they fall under kingdom plant okay clear with that <clears throat> fine so yeah have got quiz for you all comment your answers in the comment section okay which of these is a defining characteristics of plant a autotrophic nature eukaryotic cell structure cellulosic cell wall aerobic respiration so which of this is a defining characteristic of plant 
so what do you consider out of these yes all these are the characteristic of plant but to which option do you give the first preference see in the five kingdom classification what did they consider the most option c are you sure are you sure with that see cellulosic cell wall see okay fine you saw cell wall in fungi also it had chitin in it okay fine here it is cellulosic cell wall can be considered what is that other thing which is not observed in any other kingdom see even kingdom animalia what happens see the cell is eukaryotic they don't have cell wall and their mode of nutrition is heterotrophic that's why they, they are kept separately right <laughs> yes it is option c cellulosic cell wall right so yeah you should be like this confident how much ever i confuse you students you should not get confused okay so here after i'll try to sh you know confuse you student but you should be you know confident enough to choose your answer right so very good sujita that you didn't get confused in between at times what happens is that if you just tell them are you sure if you just ask them are you sure are you sure they get confused and they'll change the answer so i just wanted to check that if you will change your answer or not very good yeah okay so the plant having vascular tissue without seed having vascular tissue without seeds which one is it angiosperm or is it gymnosperm is it pteridophyte or is it bryophyte and sujita are you in class 10th or are you just are you going to start your class 10th or you have just finished your class 10th so comment your answer for this as well see a vascular tissue without seeds what's the right answer for this okay i'll give 10 seconds comment your answer in the comment section is it angiosperm gymnosperm pteridophyte bryophyte see plants having vascular tissue without seed see your bryophyte see bryophyte the plant body is differentiated but then it does not have it does not have vascular tissue so this is ruled out is it okay you are preparing for uh, neat now you have completed your class 11th and 12th i guess option b are you sure without seed it is asking option b are you sure with that see here they have vascular tissue without seeds i already told you that gymnosperm and angiosperm these two are seed bearing plants oh okay okay are you sure with your option option b says gymnosperm and your question is plants they have vascular tissue but without seeds shall i lock your answer it is actually pteridophyte it is not gymnosperm because see these two are seed bearing plant these two are seed they are seed bearing plants but the thing is in angiosperm the seeds are present within the fruit here seeds are naked they are not embedded by any uh, fruits or flowers okay but here what is the question yes these three have vascular tissue without seed that's why i was stressing on this without seed without seed pteridophytes are the one whose body is well differentiated and then they have vascular tissue but then they are not seed producing plants okay clear with that my next question see a plant that has seeds but no flowers and fruit see now again plant that had that has seed but no flowers and fruit there was a student who had asked right ha huh, it was you who had asked i told you is it thallophyte bryophyte pteridophyte or gymnosperm you had asked this question right see the like 
Now I want you to answer for this. See, plant has seed, but no fruits, no flower. Which one? Is it thallophyte or is it bryophyte or is it tardophyte or is it gymnosperm? Okay, let me give you 10 seconds. It is yes. Option D, gymnosperm. They yes, they produce seeds. That is only for reproduction purpose. That's it. Uh, the seeds are present. They are naked. They are not embedded within fruit flower in the sense they don't. See, there may be some species in gymnosperm which may you know produce flower, but then it is very very rare. Very rare species. Okay. Fine. Now the stored food material in plant is, is it? cellulose or is it glucose is it starch or is it glycogen see here they are asking stored food material plant prepare their food uh, through a process that is called as photosynthesis right wherein the glucose will be synthesized so let's say that they have uh, there is excess of glucose right now and plants uh, uh, they have already derived energy and some amount of glucose is still uh, rem it is remaining so what will they do? They will do. They will store that glucose. They will store that glucose in which form? Whether cellulose is not glucose. Option B is ruled out. Yeah. Option C. Yes. Starch. They are stored in the form of starch. Now let's say that plants want energy. They want to derive energy. That time the starch will be converted to glucose, and then from the glucose energy will be derived through respiration process. Yes. Correct. Okay. So yeah. Now, let's start with thallophyta. Okay. Yes, Sonali. Option C. Yes, option C was the right answer. Okay. So, now we'll start with thallophyta. We'll already know class 9th you have studied yeah, about thallophyta, but it was just a part. Maybe hardly one or two paragraph you would have studied. But now, we will focus on the types of thallophyta, how do they prepare their food, how do they reproduce, where are they used, what is the use of those plants in the in our environment, in our society, we will study about all that. Okay, so before that, see why do all plants are called autotrophs? Very simple, because they prepare their own food, right? Okay, so yeah, your thallophyta, I like I have already told you, the plant body is undifferentiated, they don't have they don't have, uh, you know, just Sonali, just before few minutes, the chemistry class was done, right? So, yeah, and Ankita ma'am, probably tomorrow she will be taking. Okay. Yes, the most primitive and uh, it is the most primitive and simple plant, right? And then here the plant in this group are commonly called as algae. I told you, here the thallophyta, because see algae meaning is same. The plant body is undifferentiated. <clears throat> okay. Clear with that? Fine. And here, where do you see these thallophyta mostly? They are aquatic. You get to see them, you get to see them even in ponds, right? Uh, you When you go, like, you know, out of station, in between, you get to see lots of uh, pond. Over there, you get to see such type of green color layer that would have developed on the surface of the lake or pond. Right, that is nothing but that is your algae and they are found in marine water also. The algae are found in marine water also. Okay, and some are even terrestrial, inhabiting the most, like in moist places also they tend to grow. Let's say maybe near the river banks and all or else where uh, the region is very, uh, maybe let's say in some places there is heavy rainfall. Always there will be rain, uh, rain that will be happening, rainfall every day. So, in such areas, the moisture content is very high and over there, you get to see algae is growing, right? So, they are present as like, you know, they will be even floating and also they can be terrestrial also. They can be water body also and they can be terrestrial as well, okay? Then the whole plant body, they remain in the, I told you it is undivided. 
the entire body it is undifferentiated they don't have leaf they uh, they don't have stem or roots nothing it is the plant body is undifferentiated that's why it is called as thallus thallus it is a greek word which means undivided undivided mass okay it appears like this within water body also see it is freely floating this is how it looks right okay fine now the plant body is not differentiated the same thing see here it looks like this there is no stem or leaf nor root okay fine and then here but then i told you still the algae here the body is not differentiated but still it is if they fall under kingdom plantae why it's because see they have you know cell wall their the nature of cell is eukaryotic and it is multicellular their mode of nutrition is also autotrophic right every plant they are autotrophs right that's why the algae fall under this division that is thallophyta okay and then they have cell wall which is made up of cellulose only like other plants see in plants the cell wall is mainly made up of cellulose whereas in fungi i told you fungi also have got cell wall okay their mode of nutrition varies and also the composition of their cell wall has got chitin in it okay you must remember this they have the fungus have chitin in their cell wall okay fine and then they also reserve excess food in the form of starch see all the properties is been it is seen in plants also the same properties are seen over here also yes yes true okay and then some algae have additional axillary pigments of other color such as red brown yellow you know right there is blue algae red algae red algae is also it is most it is quite famous right there is this blue green algae and so some algae are brownish yellow in color why it's because they have accessory pigments and already when i was doing uh, the light reaction and dark reaction i explained you what is accessory pigment seen plant let's say in a well developed plant uh, like your you know gymnosperm and angi gymno let's consider angiosperm it uh, produces fruits and flowers right they perform proper photosynthesis so they will they will have to carry on their light reaction as well as dark reaction in light reaction they require solar energy and who traps that solar energy it is chlorophyll pigment right along with chlorophyll pigment the plant they have accessory pigment as well so what is that accessory pigment that is present in plants can you comment in the comment section chlorophyll is not accessory pigment see chlorophyll is directly involved in photosynthesis okay but as accessory pigments they are not they are involved in photosynthesis but indirectly they are involved in photosynthesis but indirectly they are involved yes xanthophylls nothing but see there are carotenoids again carotenoids are your accessory pigment carotenoids again it has two types carotene and xanthophyll yes carotenoids has two types under carotenoids it is xanthophyll and carotene okay they uh, you know they carry pigments like for non green color it can be red it can be yellow so such accessory pigments are also seen in algae okay fine now examples for this see your green algae has got chlorophyll pigments that's why it is called as chlorophyceae whereas your red algae has got yes it has got chlorophyll a chlorophyll d along with that it also has got phycoerythrin you must remember this phycoerythrin is the pigment that is present in red algae rhodophyceae and then what about brown algae brown algae has got yes it has got chlorophyll a chlorophyll c as well along with that it has got fucoxanthin it is that fucoxanthin that gives brown color to the algae okay examples example is see spirogyra which has got the simplest plant body it is thread like structure along with that even chlamydomonas this is the chlamydomonas image of chlamydomonas spirogyra you have already seen in your lower classes so this is how this chlamydomonas looks like 
and then what is the example for red algae it is gallidium and also polysiphonia right and for brown algae brown algae it is sargassum fine these are some of the examples for your algae see your algae is basically classified into three types based on the pigment that they carry that is green algae red algae brown algae and examples for those okay so in your class name you had just studied about thallophyta that yes plant body is undifferentiated and you had remembered some of the examples right but look at your class 11th syllabus here the algae is further divided into three types based on the pigment that they carry and for each type you will have to remember examples you will have to mention those examples okay and one more thing student if if you are if you are in class 10th and in case if you are preparing for ntsc exam or in olympiad exam and if you are a student who is preparing for neat also this session is going to be useful this entire series is useful for you all okay even those students who are uh, now starting their class 11th for them also this series is going to be useful as we are going to uh, brushing up your uh, you know class 9th syllabus also along with that we are focusing on the class 11th as well okay fine see always your basics are you must be strong with your basics only then you know you can survive in your class 11th and 12th and also in case if you are a student who is preparing for competitive exam your basics has to be strong then you can you know solve other tricky questions it will become easy for you all okay so yeah with that I have got question for you all that is see the red algae belongs to rhodophysia or is it uh, phyophysia which one is it option a or option b the red algae belongs to rhodophysia or phyophysia option a or option b yes it is option a okay fine yeah how do they reproduce the thallophyta it is usually asexual but sexual reproduction is also it also occurs in some form of the thallophyta but mostly it is asexual reproduction okay and here i have given you the cycle you can refer to this fine okay and then like you all know now we'll talk about some of the thallophyta the first one is see spirogyra see spirogyra the structure looks like this they are multicellular and how is the body it is filamentous i told you it is just thread like structure so this is filamentous okay and then ribbon shaped chloroplast they have this ribbon shaped chloroplast okay can you see this or else how was the chloroplast in your uh, well developed plant it was you know membrane bound double layered membrane bound outer layer was there inner layer was there and within the body there was stroma there was lamellae right lamellae is nothing but uh, you know the the grana they were arranged like the thylakoids they were arranged in a steak like structure and that together forms grana and it is in the thylakoid membrane light reaction was taking place and in stroma dark reaction right but look at uh, the chloroplast that is present in this uh, spirogyra it is just it is ribbon shaped uh, right and pyrenoid nothing but the storage body may contain protein lipids and starch these can you see this dark green colored dots in this uh, ribbon shaped structure they are your pyrenoids what are they actually doing what is their main function they store food food material it not only starch but also proteins and lipid so these three features about spirogyra you will have to learn okay clear with that and the next one is gallidium see the gallidium again it is yes all uh, the uh, the living organ the life form that falls under kingdom plantae they are multicellular eukaryotic cell but then their body uh, design changes that varies so again in case of gallidium here their body uh, it is filamentous nothing but they are also like this you get to see such you know thread like structures only okay and they are marine habitat they are mostly seen in salt 
salty water, sea water, marine habitat. They also reserve food material in the form of glycogen. So here they, this is one important feature which you will have to remember. See, usually how do plants uh, store their, uh, uh, you know, food material? The reserve form is starch, right? But look at gallidium, whose plant body is undifferentiated. It is still not well developed. But then they store their food material in the form of glycogen, such as floridin, floridin starch. Okay, and also agar is obtained from gallidium. See, agar uh, students, as you go, uh, you know, further, in case if you choose a plant tissue and all that as a subject, you will come across this agar, which is one of the important medium with the help of which you can, you know, do your plant tissue culture. And that agar, it is a jelly-like substance that is being obtained by algae only, gallidium. Okay, clear with that? Whether you students had any idea about agar, have you ever heard about agar before? Okay, so these are the important features of this thallophyta, that is gallidium. Okay, wherein this thing is important, you will have to mention this. And also about agar. Okay, fine. And next one is sargassum. So, again here it is multicellular only and here it is because the plant body is undifferentiated. How will they be? It is filamentous. Some are filamentous and some are just like, you know, you get to see leafy like structure but it is undifferentiated only. So, here even this sargassum is this, uh, you know, what is it, filamentous form. Okay, and here the presence of chromatophore with the pigment that is called as fucoxanthin that is rich in iodine. This is found in what? Sargassum. And it is because of this fucoxanthin. This algae appears brown in color. See, it is yellowish brown. Yellowish brown in color. Okay, why? W which type of pigment is this? It is chromatophore. See, chromatophore, obviously, see, it is chromatophore, uh, it is, it carries pigment which are non-green in color. Whereas chloro, when it comes, when something that starts with chloro, then it is green color pigment. If it is chromo or chromato, then it is colors other than green color. So obviously here, and it is iodine rich as well. And this is iodine rich as well. Okay. And here the reserved food material is starch. Starch like substance which is called as laminarin. Okay, you must remember these terms. See, in case of the sargassum, the reserved food material is laminarin. Whereas in your previous one, gallidium, what is it? It is glycogen. Okay. Whereas in case of spirogyra, here it was pyrenoids, pyrenoids which stored the food material in the form of protein, lipids and starch itself. Okay, clear with that? So in all the three, you notice that what you will have to explain what is the pigment that is present? What is the storage organ or storage part that is present within the algae? And in what form the food is stored? What is it actually called as? And also you must mention the pigment that is present. These are the four points that will have to be mentioned in each case. Okay, clear with that? Fine. And also the importance of algae. Where is this algae used in our society? See, algae, uh, it has been used in many of the, you know, biotechnology industries and all that. Food industry, biotech industries, they make use of this algae a lot, okay? They are important source of food also. And also see, chlorella and spirulina is the favorable food that is rich in protein content, okay? Some people whose uh, protein content is less the i have seen one of my friend itself during my college days she used to consume this spirogyra in the form of capsules see these capsules they are rich in protein okay hi hi good afternoon right so these are rich in protein as well and along with that i told you agar agar see this is the plant tissue culture thing wherein they are growing the plants they are culturing the particular plant species, right? Wherein the agar, it comes in this powdery form and then what do they do is they mix some amount of water, they sterilize that thing, the agar and finally it turns into jelly-like structure 
and to this jelly like substance they you know they culture that callus and finally that callus callus is undifferentiated uh, plant body and that further develops into plant so that's what when you go uh, like as you go further in case if you uh, choose pure science and uh, let's say in case if you study get to study about plant tissue culture then practically you will have to perform all this okay over there this agar agar is used it is called as agar agar only okay see it is prepared from red algae like i told you it is gallidium and also gracilaria from these they get agar agar which is these two are type of red algae so again see now plants know they are growing in this culture which means to say that the agar agar is uh, rich in nutrients it provides those important nutrients for the plants to grow and along with this certain hormones are also added see plant hormones which you have already studied there is auxin gibberellin cytokinin and all that so now let's say for uh, to enhance the plant growth to this medium to this agar medium they add some amount of uh, hormones also okay so agar agar it plays very important role in plant tissue culture okay that has been derived from algae only okay is it gallidium or is it uh, chlorella okay is it option a or option b which type of algae was that was that red or brown agar agar is been derived from red algae or brown algae and is it option a or option b option a yes yes correct next and also in agriculture the algae are used in nitrogen fix uh, fixation even as a fertilizer manure see here uh, like you yes it is red algae it is derived from a red algae yes correct see here uh, you know right uh, already even there was this chapter that is improvement in food resources chapter in your class 9th wherein you studied about fertilizer manure and all that yes manure is good for plant but what about fertilizer fertilizers these are man made and uh, they contains lot of inorganic uh, substances right it it has got so many chemicals in them and it takes very uh, longer period for them to get degraded therefore they in order to overcome that issue the farmers started using uh, organic uh, fertilizers also nothing but pest bio fertilizers so algae is were used as bio fertilizer why because algae has got the capacity to fix nitrogen the atmospheric nitrogen right and also you would have uh, seen there are certain bacteria also but then algae also is capable of fixing atmospheric nitrogen and uh, so that plants can make use of that atmospheric nitrogen okay so therefore it is used as fertilizer and it is not chemical they are not man made right it is organic only and that's why it does not cause much harm to the soil as well or else in case if you use chemicals then the soil will lose its uh, you know fertility and after a long after certain period of time the entire land becomes unfit for cultivation so by using algae as a bio fertilizer you can overcome such issues okay so algae is also used as a bio fertilizer fine okay and also you know the photosynthetic activity of the algae what do they do they produce oxygen which is used by the bacteria for sewage decomposition okay so you know right uh, in the sewage treatment of you know the water which has got lot of waste material in which let's say some are degradable the organic so bacteria can actually break down those waste material but for the breakdown of those waste material by bacteria the bacteria requires oxygen and that oxygen is provided by algae that's how algae plays important role in sewage decomposition also how the algae provides oxygen to the bacteria and then the bacteria will break down those organic substances organic waste material that is present in the plant whereas the one which cannot be broken down has to be removed physically only whereas those material which can be waste material which can be broken down see here organic uh, certain waste material which can be broken down can be 
uh, this can be done with the help of bacteria but for that oxygen is required and that oxygen is provided by algae you can look at this diagram which makes it clear for you all understood with this that how algae is used in the sewage decomposition as well okay and all, also over here you can see that mesh like structure this will prevent those let's say there are certain uh, waste material which cannot be broken down such waste material will be separated from the purified water okay so this is behaving like a filter over here fine okay so now what do you understand by colonial algae can you answer can you comment in the comment section that what is colonial algae i want you all to find out what is colonial algae i am sure you all would have studied by now about this you all would have come across this colonial algae can you comment your answers in the comment section okay i want you all only to answer to this colonial algae let me see how many of them will type the answers in the comment section for what is colonial algae so till now you studied bit depth about algae so now i want you all to comment your answers in the comment section that what do you understand by colonial algae till now i have given you so many examples i have explained their features right so now i want you all to think about what is colonial algae okay so yeah in case if you want me to explain about colonial algae then uh, at the end of the session i'll explain about colonial algae so what still was this session till the end okay yeah fine so here have got quiz for you all comment your answers in the comment section see if you are asked to classify various algae into distinct groups which of the following characters you should choose okay the first one is the nature of stored food material in the cell or is it the structural organization of the thallus or is it the chemical composition of the cell wall or is it the types of pigment present in the cell see if you are asked to classify various algae into distinct groups see you saw three classification right yes yes sujata a group of algae together yeah the term itself says colonial right so certain questions na like especially in biology so many terms see when it has been asked that what is that particular thing see in that one term itself the explanation will be hidden okay only thing is some students they find biology difficult it's because they find it difficult to remember the examples some of the uh, you know difficult uh, concepts like they find it difficult to pronounce such terms certain examples right a sort okay you can a sort it is fine but anyway i'll be explaining in depth at the end of the session the colonial algae and there is some more concepts that will be explained at the end okay till then i want you all to think of it okay so now uh, what is the answer for this see uh, already we saw there were three types of algae right so now on what basis those algae were classified was it because the the nature of stored food material in the cell or is it the structural organization of the thallus structural organization of the thallus see thallus itself is undifferentiated nothing but uh, the plant body itself is undifferentiated then how can we even choose this option the structural organization and then option c says the chemical composition of the cell wall or the types of pigment that is present in the cell so your right answer is pigments option d okay fine a member of class chlorophyceae is what was the example that was given is it gallidium or is it chlamydomonas or is it a uh, polysiphonia or is it sargassum what is the right answer the member of the class option d sargassum are you sure see it is chloro whenever there is chloro it means to say that they carry green pigment chlorophyll so was sargassum green algae or was that brown algae or red algae 
Gallium is is are you sure? Is that red algae brown or green? Think twice. See, I said green algae. <laughs> okay, so I lock your answer. But then it is Chlamydomonas. See, because I told you, I had given you example, right? Wait, let me show you that slide. That time I told you when you say chloro, ha, huh, look at this. Whenever there is that chloro thing in the name, it's very simple. The, the algae will be green in color because see they will have chlorophyll pigment. That is clear. Here it is rhodo. You can think like this. Okay, red algae. And this one is what is it? Pheophysia is the brown algae. Okay, here the example is pyrogyra chlamydomonas. These two are the best example for green algae. Okay. D for the previous one. Okay, okay. Yeah, D was for the previous one. But then your right answer for this is uh, chlamydomonas. It is chlamydomonas. Okay. Next one. Which of the following pigments are found in brown algae? Is it chlorophyll A and C? Is it chlorophyll A and D? Or is it chlorophyll A, C and fucoxanthin? Or is it chlorophyll C and phycoerythrin? Okay, these two are ruled out. Option A and option B is ruled out. Is it option C or option D? Is it option C or option D? Yeah, it happens. So, what you will have to do is see or uh, try to, you know, study the concepts with the help of images, diagrams and all that. See, if it is pyrogyra, it is just, let's say, you draw your diagram in green in color. Okay, thread-like structure. Chlamydomonas is like oval kind of thing. You draw that in green in color. So, you, you would have seen that n number of times, right? Green color, the spirogara you would have drawn in green color. Chlamydomonas you would have drawn in green color. When it is asked in exam, immediately you choose that. Okay, always remember student, biology, particularly for every concept, there is diagram. If you study the concept with the help of diagrams, then you will never forget that concept. You will remember that for a longer period of time. That's for sure. So, option C. Yes, it is option C. Fucosanthin. Okay. So, yeah. Now, we'll move on to bryophyta. Okay, again over here, we'll study some of the examples of bryophyta. We will learn uh, their features, right? And then, we'll also study about where it is being used and all that. Okay, and bryophyta already you know, right? See here, the plant body is differentiated into leaf, stem. They have leaf-like structure. They have stem-like structure. They have root-like structure. But then the root is not the real one. It is, it appears like root, but it is not root. Instead, it is rhizoid, which helps in attaching the plant body to some surface and then they will grow. Okay, and here, Bryophyta, I guess it is called as amphibian of the plant kingdom. If I am not wrong, the bry bry bryophyta is also called as uh, the amphibian of the plant kingdom. Can anyone tell that why it is called as amphibian of the uh, plant kingdom? Just think. Just think of why it is called as amphibian of the plant kingdom. Okay. So, again, bryo, it is it's actually a Greek word which means, which means, see, bryon meaning moss, phyta means plant. So, they... It comprises moss. See, you can see over here, there is this stem-like structure and then they have this leaf-like structure and here it is not visible but then they have root-like structure also. They have root-like structure also but then that is not the real root. Only it is, they have that root-like structure only to, you know, uh, for uh, getting themselves attached to some substrate. Yes, they mostly live in uh, water. You get to see them near river banks. Okay. So, the thing is they can live and live on water also. They can uh, like they can live in water also but mostly you get to see them on lands only. But then for reproducing they want water. For the reproduction they want water. 
that is one of the reason why it is called as amphibian okay see they grow in moist and shady places like damp soil rocks even near wells tree trunk they grow you get to see them in such places okay and then the bryophytes are the bryophytes are perhaps the first terrestrial plant having autotrophic mode of nutrition these are terrestrial plant the first terrestrial plant which has got autotrophic mode of nutrition okay you must keep this also in mind and the example is liverwort hornwort and mosses are the example for this bryophyta yes they are dependent on water for uh, the reproduction yes that's why it is considered as amphibian also amphibian of plant kingdom i had read this in some you know in some posts so i just added that point over here okay fine and here the liverwort and hornwort they have the flat green thalloid body and then they have whereas mosses they have differentiated plant body okay see look at this this is the differentiated plant body in case of moss whereas in case of this liverwort and all the plant body is like see it again over here it is bit undifferentiated right see that's why it is thalloid body thalloid thallophyta thallo means it is in greek it is undifferentiated okay clear with that fine and then see true roots leaves flower are absent so they just have root like structure okay and then they have uh, leaf like structure flower like structure that is ncert line oh okay i had i had seen it on over insta there was some post like i follow some of the science uh, uh, this one uh, yeah accounts so in some post i had seen so i, I guess yesterday i had seen okay that is there in ncert also okay fine yeah so yeah like i told you they have rhizoids right root like structure that helps in you know fixing the plant body to it can be to the soil or it can be to rock also nothing but to substrate to some support okay fine so now the bryophytes include liverworts and fern or is it mosses and liverworts what is the right answer good evening good evening ankur is it option a or b what is the right answer option b yes it is option b okay fine and here like i told you here the plant body is differentiated you get to see that leaf like structure you get to see uh, the stem like structure root like structure but then the vascular bundles are yes yes option b is the right answer see vascular bundle is not present your xylem and phloem is not present and one more thing students already have studied in your class 9th right the tissue chapter see xylem is made up of four elements and phloem is also made up of four elements right so now tell me those four elements that is present in the xylem as well as phloem uh, yeah the thing is i get your comments after few seconds it's not immediate i know you all would have answered before but then by the time it appears here in the screen it takes some 30 to 60 seconds of time yes 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 okay so yeah here it is non vascular plant nothing but they don't have xylem or phloem multicellular they have male sex organ and female sex organ okay the male sex organ is anthridium whereas the female sex organ is archegonium okay i told you now for reproduction they want water right okay here they don't have vascular tissue but then they have male sex organ and female sex organ male is it is anthridium and the female is archegonium okay clear with that 
see yes water is required for fertilization right and that's why they are called as amphibian of the plant kingdom right bryophyta they are also called as amphibian of the plant kingdom why because they require water for the fertilization for delivery of male gamete to the female gamete see they require water body right okay fine now see the bryophyte bryophytes are called amphibian of the plant kingdom because i just explained right see here they can live in soil but are dependent on water for sexual reproduction see here they usually occur in damp humid and shaded areas so obviously it is option a option a is the right answer right okay so now how do non vascular plant get water and nutrients yeah no what was the function of those vascular tissue the xylem and phloem xylem was transporting water whereas phloem was translocating food now here see in your thallophyta also and even in bryophyta they don't have any conducting vessels like xylem and phloem then how is the nutrients and water being transported how can you think of this the reason is very simple the reason is very simple see okay let there is no but then the food is delivered within the plant body yes ma'am do you ask question but don't give answers for that i don't know the answer oh okay which which question this one see the see the concept is very simple sujita which question which question is for this one okay let me explain you now itself this one see here i had already told you when i was doing the tissue chapter see in plants uh, let's say the well developed plant body see there are some plants which are shorter okay fine and there are trees also huge they are so tall right so now how do roots get water how do plants get water first and foremost thing i'll give you the example of water okay so what happens is that root they absorb xylem ah made up okay that one see xylem is made up of four elements and phloem is also made up of four elements the xylem is made up of tracheids vessels xylem vessels and then they have uh, phloem xylem uh, parenchyma and uh, xylem uh, fibers these are the four elements tracheids vessels xylem parenchyma and xylem fibers okay whereas phloem is also made up of four element that is sieve tube okay and then they have companion cells and then they all they also have phloem parenchyma and phloem fiber these are the four elements that the phloem is made up of and also the xylem is made up of okay clear with that and over here even for this then how do non vascular plant get water and nutrients very simple through diffusion see now let's say here the plant body is very small so diffusion can play important role in transporting food material from one cell to another cell see first and foremost thing majority of the the cells will have every cell will have chloroplast right you saw the structure of uh, spirogyra every cell had that you know that uh, ribbon like structure the chloroplast was there you are welcome sujita the chloroplast was there right let's say how is water being transported is through diffusion because the plant body is very small yes they are multicellular but then the cells they are not that huge the plants within plant body aram se the water can you know be delivered through osmosis whereas in case of higher plants like your gymnosperm angiosperm the plants and trees they are so tall so now let's say the root it will absorb water from the soil through osmosis and also it will absorb some minerals from the soil through diffusion and now from the root now let's say the water will have to be delivered to the tip of the tree which is very huge over there the diffusion will not work because in case of diffusion what happens the substance will move from higher concentrated region to lower concentrated region right which means to say that the the substance will have to pass from one cell to another cell it will have to pass each and every cell now let's say that in case of tall tree there are so millions of cells are there now let's say that if the water passes through each and every cell then it takes it takes 3 to 4 years to reach the tip of the tree okay therefore it becomes very difficult over there to transport the water 
via diffusion process therefore in case of higher plant body higher uh, like in higher plant body nothing but the trees fall under that highly well developed uh, plant right so over there the xylem and phloem is present to facilitate the transport of water within you know few minutes or else if it takes longer period of time then what happens the entire plant body will die to prevent that to prevent that in higher plant you get to see xylem and phloem because they have millions of cells but in case of these algae uh, and also in case of bryophytes and all the plant body is very small and over the diffusion works okay clear with that fine so now i want you all to answer to this what of the following is true about bryophyte they possess anthridia and archegonia they contain chloroplast or some are thalloid and some are differentiated all of the above what is the right answer for this is it option a b c or d see yes they possess they have this anthridia and archegonia right they do have chloroplast that's why they fall under kingdom plantae they are autotrophs they prepare their own food and i told you their uh, liverworts and uh, you know there was this the liverwort was it had thallus kind of thalloid body whereas mosses it had differentiated plant body right so what do you think option d yes it is all of the above option d is the right answer okay next see bryophyte can be separated from algae why because they possess anthridia and archegonia or is it because they contain chloroplast see even algae had chloroplast so this is not the answer and some are thalloid and some are differentiated have no conducting tissue see algae also has no conducting tissue and your bryophyte also has no conducting tissue that is common so even option d is ruled out so it is either option a or option c what is the right answer hmm is it option a or option c it is it is option a here i told you bryophyte they have male sex organ and female sex organ whereas thallophyte had not yes option a is the right answer okay next see the female reproductive part of bryophyte is is it anthridium or is it oogonium or is it archegonium or is it sporangium so it is not b or d that is ruled out so it is, is it option a or is it option c option a or option c anthridium or archegonium the female reproductive part of bryophyte it is it is option c archegonium okay fine next now we'll continue with bryophyte itself okay yes yes sujita it is option c right now what are the male and female sex organ in the bryophyte are called as we just answered it right it is your anthridium and archegonium yes 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 sujita it is option c yeah okay ha huh. like i told you see the bryophyte they exist in two form in its life cycle they have two forms okay drishti hi drishti yes option c was the right answer for the previous one yes see one is the dominant form okay that is your gametophyte phyte and then the other one is short lived form that is your sporophyte okay here it has thallus like body okay whereas in this case 
it is reproductive phase so these are the two forms in its life cycle which one bryophyta okay we will see that now okay so here what happens see here i told you the reproduction takes place in the form of spores okay so now i told you for germination of the spore that results in the production of daughter plants right which develops into gametophyte right okay and then what happens that gametophyte is that is independent okay and that gametophyte is it that is undifferentiated form that is the thylakoid form i told you know the bryophyta it exists in two form in its life cycle this is that first part wherein it exists as that uh, you know undifferentiated uh, plant body right wherein its part uh, the plant is not differentiated into root stem or leaf okay and then the sporophyte it depends on the gametophyte okay so now during this life cycle what happens is that the bryophytes gametophytes and sporophytes they form they you know alternatively they form exist alternatively that alternation of generation occurs fine see here for your easy understanding purpose i have included all these cycles right and then what happens in case of vegetative reproduction see here a new plant is formed from non reproductive part of the plant nothing but from the vegetative part of the plant body it can be see here in case of uh, even the rose you would you will notice that vegetative propagation right you just cut the stem and then you plant it again and provide them all the requirements like uh, the proper sunlight add them enough amount of water and after some days you will notice the rose growing again the rose plant that is nothing but vegetative reproduction only wherein with the help of stem again the plant is reproduced once again so the same vegetative pro propagation occurs over here also but here in this bryophyta the plant body yes it is differentiated but it does not have true leaf stem or root right so here what happens the fragmentation of the thylakoid itself happens thylakoid is nothing but the undifferentiated in the first part it is undifferentiated plant body right that is thylakoid form it is in the thylakoid form the thylakoid itself it will break and from the once it is broken the new piece from that new piece the another individual will develop okay you can see over here the thylakoid part here you can see some small uh, you know structures that is coming out and then these structures will develop into new individual okay clear with that okay so now see the sporophyte of bryophytes is is it haploid or diploid the sporophyte of bryophyte is it haploid or diploid is this confusing students if it is confusing i can explain it to you once again because this is important so the sporophyte whether it is haploid or diploid diploid are you sure with that <laughs> are you sure shall i lock your answer it is it is diploid okay the sporophyte of it is diploid fine till now students do you have any doubts feel free to comment in the comment section i can explain it once again okay we'll move further the uses of bryophytes so we saw that how we spoke about bryophytes we saw that how is their life cycle and now we'll study about the uses of okay fine we'll continue with the uses of bryophytes see they are used as fuel by burning it in dry condition that is one thing and they can be used as peat also why which is which plays important role in you know making the soil fertile it improves the texture of the soil for horticulture sujita you want me to explain once again okay fine see here you 
this is clear, right? It has got dominant form, the gametophyte, during its life cycle. Nothing but during that uh, the reproduction cycle, it has two forms. This is clear, right? One is dominant form, that is gametophyte, and then uh, the second one is short-lived form. This short-lived form is sporophyte. So, in case of when it is in the dominant form, the plant body is the it is undifferentiated. It has got the thyroid like structure. Whereas it is during this sporophyte, it is actually reproductive phase. Clear with this, it has got two phase dominant phase, short lived phase. Dominant phase, the plant body is undifferentiated. Whereas in this short lived form, it is actually the reproductive phase. Okay. Fine, so how does it start? How does it start? First one is the formation of spore. So, for the formation of spore, you know, the reproduction takes place by the formation of spore. First, uh, the, you know, the male reproductive organ, the spores develop, right? And then the germination of the spore. You know, right, we saw uh, in some, for some of the species, for some of the uh, bryophyte species, majority of them, they require water, right? I even show you, showed you that animation, wherein the spores were delivered to the female one, right? That results in the production of a daughter plant which develops into gametophyte what happens the germination of the spores the germination of the spores and after fertilization fertilizing with the you know after fertilization there is production of a daughter plant daughter plant is formed which develops into gametophyte that is your gametophyte clear with that fine okay next what happens this is your daughter plant is generated. Next, what happens? The gametophyte. See, gametophyte is nothing but the daughter plant. Already the male and female gamete has few, the fertilization has happened and a daughter plant is developed. This is your first dominant phase where the plant body is undifferentiated. That undifferentiated plant body, that is the daughter plant, that is your gametophyte, which does not have any parts. And then what happens? The sporophyte depends on the gametophyte. The second phase of the life cycle, that depends upon this first phase. Okay, how? How in the sense? See here, during the life cycle of the bryophyte, the gametophytes, nothing but the daughter plant and the sporophyte, they exhibit alternatively. Alteration of generation. See here, you can see over here, the spores, Mitosis happens, gametophyte is developed and then the gametes are released, then fusion happens, that is zygote and then sporophyte is obtained. Again, the same cycle occurs. Okay, if you want, you can take screenshot of this. Wait, let me erase on. If you want, you can take screenshot of this cycle. When you are studying, you can keep this as reference. Okay, and then what happens? A sexual reproduction from the plant body itself. Again, a sexual reproduction also takes place over here. What happens from the plant body? Some vegetative parts will be released. Like over here, it is in case of thalli, it happens. The undifferentiated plant body, this happens. You know, right, in bryophyta, some bryophytes are undifferentiated and some are differentiated. In case of differentiated, the first condition takes place, whereas it has got dominant phase and the short-lived period, that one. In case of undifferentiated bryophyte, over there, here, uh, the vegetative propagation occurs, nothing but asexual reproduction, wherein uh, from the plant body, certain pieces, like, is released and this will develop into new individual. Fine. In case of uh, liver, liver wants, the plant body is not differentiated, right? It had got that uh, thalloid kind of plant body. In that case, this happens. Okay, clear with that? Did I clear your doubt or you have any doubt in this? Uh, in case if you want me to uh, explain anything particularly in this, you have any question, like specific question from this, you can comment in the comment section. Okay. Fine. So, yeah. We will continue with this. The use is, it is used as peat also, which plays important role in, uh, you know, improving the soil fertility, which is good for horticulture and all that. What is used? It is spag sphagnum. 
Sphagnum is a type of bryophyte which plays. Okay, Sujita. So sphagnum is a type of bryophyte which plays important role in. It can be used as peat also, which improves soil fertility and it also stores large amount of water, and hence that is used to transport. Uh, you know, uh, used to transport living materials. Fine. Okay. And then the mosses even they form dense mat like this as a result what happens is that you are welcome sujita in case if you have any other doubts like from this chapter you can ask me right okay so yeah here uh, you know it forms that mat like uh, the dense mat on the soil so this plays very important role in preventing the uh, soil erosion you know right now let's say there is empty land there is no grass there is uh, there is no plant or trees now let's say there is heavy rainfall that is happening or else let's say that there is huge wind pressure at times what happens let's say there is heavy rainfall okay then what happens the soil particles will be removed right and it is washed away from that particular region as a result what happens the important nutrients will be washed off along with the rain water right now let's say there is heavy huge wind pressure what happens the those soil particles will be blown away right uh, so that will make the land unfit for cultivation because the when the important nutrients uh, if they are taken away from the soil then it it is not fit for cultivation as a result that entire land will be of no use it will be waste land right so now by growing grasses and all particularly this mosses which is a type of bryophyta we can actually prevent that soil erosion why because they they form a very dense mat see it is so dense it holds the soil really very well okay as a result even if there is heavy rainfall or even if there is huge wind pressure the soil particles will not be washed off okay that is one of the important use of bryophytes okay and also some mosses they provide food for herbaceous mammals birds and other animals you would have seen right birds and all they feed and some animals they feed on, on this on these mosses right okay so these are the examples of bryophytes that is mercantia funaria risia these are some of the examples of bryophytes okay this your mercantia is nothing but this is your liver worms here the plant body is not differentiated into uh, like yeah it is differentiated but not like other bryophytes yes you get to see leaf like structure you get to see but then it's not like your funaria see here over here they have leaf like structure stem is there root is also seen right even the same thing in uh, the liver wart liver wart it is not that differentiated you can see this is your risia that's why these two they uh, their life cycle like, it is asexual reproduction whereas this one it is sexual reproduction okay clear with that okay so now i want you all to answer to this see the peat that is obtained from a uh, sphagnum moss is used as manure fertilizer or both a and b so this is used as the sphagnum sphagnum is a type of bryophyte right they play important role in preventing soil erosion and it it is also used as peat right so is it only a or is it used as fertilizer or is it both a and b think twice and then answer to this question sujita so, once again i want you to think see fertilizer what did i say what for uh, fertilizers are chemicals right they are added to plants why so that the plants uh, you know the you know to increase cultivation to double the production let's say a plant is giving us one fruit we want the same plant to give us two three fruits double we want to double the production that time we had fertilizer nothing but it is very simple let's say that a kid is growing now we want that kid to grow fast so what do we do we provide extra nutrients 
there are so many powders that are available there are that you know horlicks and all that right not just that they give vitamin tablets some they give a number of tablets also and even the mother will provide uh, nutritious rich food for the kid to grow the same thing for plants also now let's say we want uh, double outcome from the plant let's say there was one tomato there a plant was giving us one tomato now i want two tomatoes from the same plant so i will add extra nutrients right so i will add that in the form of fertilizer but then fertilizers are chemical they can cause harm to the plants so they were using bio fertilizer right so we saw that algae can be used as bio fertilizer right sujita i was confusing you i wanted to check if you will choose both a and b or if i give you explanation for fertilizer because no one i mentioned about fertilizer i wanted to check if you will change your answer you should have mentioned like no ma'am it is c c c for some question c you had mentioned about c four times yeah the same thing you should have followed here also i was just trying to confuse you it is option c and you see the explanation is given the p that is obtained from sphagnum moss is used as both fertilizer and manure <laughs> yeah because you should be sure with your answers you should understand each and every concept really well only then you know it's not just me even if somebody they they might confuse you even in your examination you should be sure with your answers right yeah so it is option c option c was the right answer okay here after i will not confuse you <laughs> okay yeah so now is alteration of generation specific for bryophytes only yes or no is it yes or no for this is it specific for bryophytes only is alteration of generation yes yes option c was the right answer for the previous one yeah so for this for this question you will get your answers as we go further because till now we have covered only thallophyta and bryophyta still pteridophyta is left and then you have gymnosperm and angiosperm after covering the pteridophyta gymnosperm and angiosperm then we can say yes in bryophyta the alteration is there is alteration of generation specific for bry bryophyta only this is question mark as of now we cannot say yes because still we have not studied about other kingdoms after completing all the five kingdoms then we can say that is it specific only for this this plant uh, plant kingdom uh, this division or is it for other divisions also we will see that okay at the end of the session we'll get to know if it is you know uh, yes or right if it is right or wrong okay as of now yes but then we will compare other divisions also with this and we will find out our answer okay fine so now i want you all to answer to this right which of the following is used as fuel and has a good capacity for water absorption is it ricea or is it mercantia or is it sphagnum or is it funaria when i was explaining you about the uses of bryophyta there was one bryophyta which had got uh, the good capacity to hold water which one was that is it option a b c or d sujitha this time i won't confuse you promise yeah yeah that's why they have alteration we'll study as we go further right that's why i told you for that question we still don't have the answer why because we are still in the bryophyte after completing other kingdoms also then other divisions other divisions under plant kingdom then we can make that decision yes it is sphagnum okay next in bryophytes see the sporophytes are dependent upon gametophyte is sporophyte dependent on gametophyte or the sporophytes and gametophyte generations are independent or is it sporophyte in itself complete the life cycle 
Option D says the gametophytes are dependent upon sporophyte. So, which is the right answer? Option A, B, C or D. In that life cycle, I told you that there is two form. Uh, the dominant one and then the short-lived one. Yes. Option A is the right answer. Yes, correct. Next. Which of the following is not a moss? Is it a sphagnum, funeria, risia or mercantia? A? No, for this, for this. Option A. Okay. It is Risia. So, here examples, like I told you, I, you had told before also no, that you were getting confused with the, you know, the members, examples and all that. The only solution for that is, you will have to practice again and again. And I will tell you, if you study all these concepts, option C, yes. So, if you study all these concepts, like, you know, uh, with the help of diagrams, if you see those uh, visually, see, always it is uh, scientifically proven students, when, see, just instead of hearing, if you just, with the visual images, if you study, then it will be retained in your mind for a longer period of time and you won't get confused also. Okay. Previous one, yes, A was for the previous one. Yeah. Yes, yes. Now, the thing is, it works like that only. After me starting the live session, after one minute only, you all will get it. So, the same thing. So, the chat is a bit slow. No worry about that. It's okay, fine. Okay. So, what is the unique feature of bryophyte? Unique feature of bryophyte. Uh, do they have vascular bundles? Or uh, is it medicinally important? Or the gametophyte uh, attached to the sporophyte? Or is it uh, sporophyte attached to the gametophyte? What is the right answer for this? Okay, I'll wait for your answer. Comment your answer in the comment section. It is, it is option D, the sporophytes attached to the gametophyte. Yes, option D is the right answer. Okay, next. See the peat moss is, uh, the moss is used as a packing material for sending flowers and live plants to distant places. Why? Is it because it is hydroscopic? Or it reduces, does it reduce transpiration or does it serve as disinfectant or is it easily available? Say, I already explained, right, that this, uh, the what is used as peat, sphagnum, right, it has got a uh, good capacity to hold water content, moist content, right? So, yeah, what is the right and that is the reason. So, what is that property actually called as? Is it high Hygroscopic? Yes. Is it hygroscopic or is it? See, it's not transpiration. Okay. It's option C is also ruled out. It's not because it is easily available. It's because it is, I told you it can hold water content for longer period of time, right? So, option A is the right answer. It is hygroscopic. Okay. Fine. So, yeah. Now, we will start with tidophyta. After tidophyta, there is gymnosperm and then comes your angiosperms. Okay. Fine. So, here in case of tidophyta, I told you, right? See, in thallophyte, the plant body is not differentiated. They don't have vascular tissue. They are not even seed producing plant. Whereas, in case of 
bryophyta the plant body is differentiated which means to say that they have root like structure they have stem like structure they have leaf like structure but then they don't produce seed whereas tied of uh, they don't produce seed at the same time they don't have uh, vascular tissues also hygroscopic is nothing but the plant it holds the water content the moist it locks the water content they can hold water for longer period of time so that thing is actually termed as hygroscopic okay and then yeah in case of tadophyta the plant body is uh, bryophyta they didn't have vascular tissue but here in tadophyta you will see that the plant body is differentiated they also have vascular tissue but the thing is they are they are not seed producing plants okay so now teron means feather phyta means plant they appear they have got this feather like appearance okay the feather like plants they, that's why it is called as ferns okay mostly they are terrestrial only where do they grow in the shady regions okay you are welcome sujita yeah so here this is the first group of plant okay which showed the presence of vascular tissue that is your xylem like i told you see xylem why did i had asked you question no that what is xylem made up of what is phloem made up of so here i told in a xylem it conducts water whereas phloem it translocates food right see your xylem is a tissue in which you can see this is the tracheid that is there actually in a well developed plant you get to see those four elements that is tracheid vessel parenchyma uh, tracheid xylem parenchyma whereas in this case the vessel and fibers are not present okay they have no vessels and also fibers are not present see the tracheids and in normal plant in normal plant the tracheids as well as parenchyma they help in the translocation of water where uh, sorry uh, the tracheids and the vessel they help in the translocation of water whereas parenchyma it helps in the sideward distribution of the water see you know right if this is the plant there are branches now the water it moves upward right now it will be flowing and at, let's say there is branch in between so now the water will have to divert towards your left side and right side so who helps in the diversion of water it is parenchyma and it also plays important role in storage of water and what is fiber doing xylem fiber xylem fiber it provides that strength to the xylem in the highly developed plants but whereas in this case in case of tadophyte they only have see still the plant body is not that developed okay but then they have xylem but what do they have out of those four element they have only tracheids and xylem parenchyma tracheid is helping in the water movement and parenchyma it, it is helping in the sideward movement of water okay clear with that you can see over here it 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 is like this you can see that water molecules being transported okay yes yes sanjana you can comment your doubt in the comment section okay fine and then phloem they also have phloem phloem consists of sea cells and phloem parenchyma whereas companion cells are absent yes yes comment your doubt in the comment section okay see here they have sieve tube and parenchyma here parenchyma what is it doing it is helping in the storage of food sieve tube is helping in the transport of food like this okay clear with that fine okay so now i want you all to which part sanjana which one see tadophytes differ from bryophytes and thallophyte in having vascular tissue or is it autotrophy what is present in tadophyta but that is not present in bryophyte and thallophyte so is it option a or option b sanjana which part you didn't get the previous one wait this one 
the xylem part see here pteridophytes are that uh, division in the plant kingdom whose plant body is differentiated and they have vascular tissue yes sujita it is actually option a yes 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 see here the thing is they have vascular tissue what is the function of vascular tissue in plants they deliver water it is like tube like uh, let's say that uh, now there is uh, let's say your watering plants right uh, you let's say that the tap is present somewhere far and your garden is somewhere it's bit farer from the place where water is available so what will you use you will use a use a lengthy tube right so water pipe you will use that water pipe and then you will connect that uh, to the you know tap and then you will you know water the plants right the same thing in plant also what happens the root will absorb the water and then that water will be delivered within the plant body same thing for food also the food will be synthesized in leaf and from the leaf region the food will be delivered to the upper part and lower part of the plant body so which is that vessel that is playing important role in delivering the water it is xylem and which is that part which is playing important role in delivering the food it is phloem clear with that but in case of this pteridophyte they only have sieve tubes and phloem parenchyma whereas companion cells and fibers are absent the same thing in xylem also tracheids and uh, parenchyma is present whereas vessels and fibers are not present clear with that okay so yeah option a is the right answer okay so now here pteridophyte like i told you yes they have vascular tissue but then they don't produce any seed which means to say that it does not give us any fruit or flowers they are seedless that's why they fall under this category that is cryptogam so till now the bryophyte thallophyte and uh, pteridophyte all these plants they do not produce any seeds that's why they are called as cryptogams okay clear with that yes and only group of seedless vascular plant so pteridophyte is the only group in which the vascular tissue is present but then they are seedless you will have to remember this point also in your exams they might ask in mcq that which is that only group of seedless vascular plant it is your pteridophyte okay fine now the dominant plant body is sporophyte which is differentiated into two root stem and leaf so in this case the plant body is differentiated into root stem and leaf and it is true unlike in your bryophyte they had root stem and leaf but they were not the real ones but here you get to see the real ones okay fine now see the dominant plant body in the pteridophyte is is it sporophyte or gametophyte see in uh, the previous one that is bryophyte in that life cycle yes there was gametophyte and sporophyte over there the gametophyte was the dominant phase whereas the sporophyte was the short lived but that was the reproductive phase right but in case of this pteridophyte which is the do dominant plant body yes it is sporophyte sporophyte is the dominant plant body which is differentiated into two root stem and leaf okay now what do you understand by vascular cryptogams what do you understand by vascular cryptogams so i already explained you cryptogams meaning yes yes option a is the right answer what is the meaning of cryptogams seedless these are seedless plants right what do you mean by vascular you have heard of that vascular tissue which indicates the presence of xylem and phloem okay so now the pteridophyta is the only plant group which are seedless nothing but they don't produce any seed but then they have vascular tissue in them that is what is the meaning of vascular cryptogams clear with that okay so now have got quiz for you all wait yes so now in which of the following would you place the plants having vascular tissue lacking seed is it in 
ब्रायोफाइट और इज इट एलगे और इज इट फन जाय और इज इट टायडोफाइट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग वुड यू प्लेस द प्लांट हैविंग वैस्कुलर टिश्यू लैकिंग सीड ओके दिस इज इजी क्वेश्चन सो आई जस्ट मूव इट इज योर ऑप्शन डी ओनली दैट इज टायडोफाइट we will see next question see tyrodophytes are called vascular cryptogams because they are yes yes sujita it is option d see because they are without seeds and flowers but they have xylem phloem both a and b or none of the above so is it only a or b or is it both a and b none of the above what is the right answer for this yes it is option c yeah now recognize the figure and find out the correct matching so you will have to label them okay see in this what is your b indicating and what is your a indicating and what is c indicating is it is a leaf or is b stem what is that is it fronts which is the right answer you will have to label them correctly so is it option a b c or d are you sure are you sure shall i confuse you are you sure sujita shall i lock this answer shall i lock this answer option d okay yes option d is the right answer good okay so now we'll continue with tyrodophytes okay write about conducting tissues of tyrodophyte very simple uh, you just you know you have that xylem and phloem xylem is only tracheids is there yeah okay xylem only you know they have tracheids whereas vessels is absent parenchyma is there same thing in phloem also they have sieve tube whereas companion cells are absent parenchyma is there that's it nothing much okay fine so now then let's talk about their life cycle how do they reproduce their life cycle see asexual reproduction occur by the means of spores okay when sporangia produce or bear spores so the cone like structure that you see over here see this structure that is sporangia and can you see those round orange color structure that is spore so the spore bearing structure is the sporangia the sporangia they are present on stem or leaf they can be in some species they are present in the stem and in some species they are present in the leaf itself okay asexual reproduction takes place through by the means of spores and where are they stored in the sporangia where is sporangia present in the plant body it can be in the stem or leaf okay fine and then the sporangium of the fern produces haploid spores remember this question can be asked which type of spores are produced is it haploid or diploid it is haploid spores which germinate to produce gametophyte and i have already told you in case of tyrodophyte it is gametophyte is not dominant okay gametophyte is not dominant so here what happens the spores are produced which are haploid which germinate to produce gametophyte okay and then what happens the gametophyte is a haploid right which is called as prothallus it is known as prothallus remember this it is very simple the spores are produced where sporangia and then they the sporangium of the sperm they produce haploid spores haploid spores will germinate to produce after germination they produce gametophyte and then what happens that gametophyte is called as prothallus germination gametophyte that is called as prothallus okay it is how does it look like see it is prothallus thallus wherever you get to see thallus it indicates that the plant body is not that differentiated 
So look at this. Is the plant body well differentiated? No, right? How does it appear? It appears. It is green in color, and even the plant body is flat, and it is heart shaped, and it is attached to solid by rhizoid. So this is that uh, rhizoid like structure which helps in attaching, getting itself attached to a, a you know support, a solid support. Clear with this? Okay. Next, what will happen? We'll see that. Now this gametophyte, which is also called as prothallus, it contains both. It contains both the sex organ. It has got male, that is antheridia, and it also has got female sex organ, which is archegonia. Clear with this? So this gametophyte is independent. It is independent. It is photosynthetic, and also it reproduces sexually. So you understood right how this gametophyte is actually produced. First, the spore is. The spore gets after it germinates. The gametophyte is produced. The gametophyte is prothallus. It what does it? It has. It is independent. It can prepare its own food. It also has got the male and female sex organ. And yes, the reproduction occurs. Fine. See the fertilization results in the formation of zygote. Then what happens after fertilization? Zygote is formed, and then the zygote develops into embryo. Right? Remains attached to the gametophyte. So this entire thing is happening in the gametophyte only. You like you can see, see the spores. It is present in sporangia. It can be in stem or leaf, and then the spores germinate. Gametophyte is formed in the gametophyte itself. The male and female sex organ is there. It is independent. It can prepare its own food, right? After fertilization, zygote is formed, and then the zygote develops into embryo. Till now, it remains in the body itself, in the gametophyte itself. Okay, later the embryo develops into sporophyte. Right? Later it develops into sporophyte, and in case of this pteridophyte, sporophyte is the dominant phase, whereas gametophyte is not dominant. Okay? See, look at this. The gametophyte it has got both, and then young sporophyte is obtained. Again, this young sporophyte prothallus it forms prothallus. The same cycle repeats. Clear with this? Okay. So now I want you to answer to this. See, in pteridophytes, the antheridium is present in prothallus or sporophyll. Is it prothallus or sporophyll? Option A or option B? Is it option A or option B? It is. It is in your C. Yes. Option A is the right answer. Okay. So now examples of pteridophytes. See, there is uh, Celle, Genelia, and uh, Lycopodium, and Equisetum, Equisetum. See, the terms are a bit complex. Yes, yes, yes. Terms are a bit complex. You will have to practice it again and again. Okay, if you mention any like uh, in your class eleventh exam, in you can mention any two examples. That is sufficient. Okay, and then there is uh, dryop dryopteria, and there is teres p silent. So teres, and then comes adian adiantum, adiantum uh, teres drip uh, dryopteria. That is dryopteria. Okay, yeah, fine. So now the uses of pteridophytes. What are all the uses of pteridophytes? See here, the mycelia they are rich in starch and consumed as nutritive. It is useful in making drugs which soothes nervous system. So it is uh, medical medicinally it has got benefits. It has got good starch content, right? It can be used to prepare certain medicines which can be uh, used to treat uh, the nervous system. And also azola. Azola is used as a nitrogen fixer in paddy field. So again, this can be used as a bio fertilizer, right? Azola can be used as bio fertilizer. Remember these examples. These are important. Azola is a type of pteridophyte that is used as bio fertilizer. Marsalia that is used in preparing a drug 
that soothes the nervous system right and also they are used by florist for decorative purpose so you would have seen right nowadays you get to see you not just now since ages this is used to decorate even in bookcases this is used right and selaginelia it is grown in potted plants has a beautiful foliage right just for decorative purpose also it is used fine okay so now which of the following is a nitrogen fixer in paddy field is it azola or is it selaginella is it selaginella or is it azola selaginella i just explained where it is used azola also i highlighted that thing i asked you to remember those examples so which is the right answer is it option a or option b is it selaginella or is it azola yes it is azola whereas selaginella is used as what does it used for decorative purpose right so how many members are there in how many members are there in vascular cryptogams how many till now we studied about thallophyte bryophyte and pteridophyte so how many vascular cryptogams are there already uh, just before few minutes i explained that what is vascular cryptogam so now how many vascular cryptogams are there is it one or is it two or is it three one two or three Are you sure with that, Sujita? This time I'm not confusing you. Three is not the right answer. It is only one. See, cryptogam means seedless plant. See, thallophyte is a seedless, but and at the same time they don't have vascular tissue. Bryophyte is also seedless, and they don't have vascular tissue. Whereas pteridophyte is the only. division in the plant kingdom which has got vascular tissue and they are seedless so it is only one pteridophyta is the only one right yes cryptogam is seedless and here vascular is mentioned vascular tissue i told you no only pteridophyte has got vascular tissue bryophyte they have no vascular tissue your thallophyte also no vascular tissue so in cryptogams only vascular tissue containing plant is pteridophyte so it is only one okay clear with that yes yes it's only one <clears throat> okay so now i want you all to answer to this question It's okay, fine, Sujita. Just read that sort. Just read the question properly. Then I guess you only saw the cryptogams. If it is cryptogams, it is three. Yes, because thallophyte, bryophyte, and pteridophyte. Yes. Yeah, I thought so. I thought you saw only cryptogams. If you would have seen vascular, then even you would have answered one. It's okay, fine. From next time, be careful. Okay. Okay. So now answer to these question. See, in pteridophytes, the sporophyte is produced by the is it gamete spore zygote or gametophyte a b c or d c it is not zygote sporophyte is produced by okay i want you all only to guess it what is the answer the sporophyte is produced by is it gamete or is it spore or is it zygote or is it gametophyte gametophyte it is zygote only that's why immediately i erased it no 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 zygote is the answer not it is not gametophyte because see gametophyte is produced by spore See where is spore present? Sporangia. 
from sporangia spores will be released when it germinates gametophyte is formed gametophyte is your prothallus the prothallus is independent it can prepare its own food and it has got male and female sex organ also and after fertilization what happens zygote will be developed after zygote the zygote forms and then that develops into embryo after that only you get the sporophyte so it is actually zygote option c i can I, i'll show you that cycle ha huh. see how gametophyte was obtained from spores spores which are present in uh, you know sporangia that will be released and then gametophyte and then this is the cycle okay yes where was i ha huh. next question prothallus of the fern produces the prothallus nothing but your gametophyte what does it produce does it produce gametes or does it produce spores or both a and b or none of the above does it produce only gametes or does it produce spores or both a and b or none of the above it is gametes okay fine next saprophytic and gametophytic phases are independent they are independent in bryophyte pteridophyte thallophyte and algae see in the previous one it was dependent what was the previous one bryophyte so is it see thallophytes and algae both are same so do you think option c and option d will be the right answer so what is the right answer it is pteridophyte see thallophyte and algae both are same it is not option c or option d yes it is option b is the right answer in bryophyte you saw that the sporophyte was uh, the short lived and it was dependent on the dominant phase that is your uh, gametophyte right it is in this one uh, the pteridophyte these two are independent okay fine so now we will start with gymnosperm after gymnosperm there is angiosperm and will be done with the plant kingdom okay fine so yeah in plant kingdom as of now we have completed till seedless plants we studied about thallophyte bryophyte pteridophyte done now we are moving on, on to the phanerogams phanerogams nothing but the plants which bear seed the seed producing plants fall under phanerogams okay clear with that fine so here the gymnosperms they are like i told you see here you would have seen these structures in that coniferous trees you they will have such type of structure which is grown outside so it is in this the, the, these are the, that's why it is called naked seed the seeds are present in this not within the fruit okay the plants it produces seed but not enclosed in the fruit okay fine and then the gymnosperms they are terrestrial only and they are evergreen plus they are woody shrubs it can be woody shrubs and they can be in the form of trees also okay and then they grow and thrive in extreme cold climatic condition where so in your snow uh, fall region and all you get to see that uh, you know coniferous trees right so they are grown in such extreme uh, cl cold climatic conditions okay some are even xerophytes also some plants are xerophytes as well okay they grow in extreme cold condition fine now they are mostly larger in sized saprophytic plant they are differentiated into root stem and leaf okay they are sporophytic plant large sized sporophytic plant see here what happens is that uh, the seeds are here they have 
male cone and female cone okay that's how the male cone it releases spores that reaches the female cone and over there the proper fertilization happens and the seed will be released from the cone after fertilization there are male cone and female cone the female cone it increases in size and then the seed drops and then when that seed reaches suitable condition that develops into the plant or tree okay see the roots are usually tape root but they are uh, choroidal roots okay the roots with blue green algae see here uh, already i have told you know the blue green algae they uh, they are they play important role in fixing nitrogen so even over here they are doing the same thing they fix that atmospheric nitrogen they make that atmospheric nitrogen available for the these gymnosperms because nitrogen is also important nutrient which is needed for the plant for their overall growth and development okay so it is actually tape root but then it is called but it is coro coralloid coralloid why it is called as coralloid because it has got blue green algae in cycus yes 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 that's why okay so again from this question can be asked right okay and also mycorrhizal roots that is the root with the fungus in pinus you get to see the root with the fungus that is mycorrhizal roots they are mycorrhizal root whereas it is a fungus that is present they also play important role in fixing the nitrogen content important nutrients to the plant you get to see that in pinus okay it appears like this and then the stem is erect how does the stem look like in gymnosperm they are erect it is aerial and also they are branched right it can be branched also it can be unbranched also it is branched in case of pines pinus and it can be branched in case of cycas and over here the xylem does not contain true vessel see does not contain true vessel see in your pteridophyte the xylem had tracheids whereas vessel was completely absent but in case of gymnosperm vessels yes it is present but then the false vessel is present not the well developed one not the complete one okay and also here phloem lacks companion cells similar to your pteridophytes okay and then the two types of leaf it is dimorphic it has got two type of leaf that is it's because it has two types of leaf it has got one more term the gymnosperm they are dimorphic okay the foliage leaf which are green in color simple needle like this is your the foliage one this one they are green in color they have that simple needle like structure and the other one is scaly leaf these are minute and they are deciduous membranous so you can see the difference see this is proper needle like structure is there whereas in this case it is very minute okay so they have two types of leaves keep this in mind one is the foliage one and the other one is scaly leaf foliage is proper green in color and it is needle like shape whereas your scaly one is the it is minute one okay fine these are the some of the simple properties that you will have to remember about gymnosperm right it is very simple right okay now pick the pair that is incorrectly matched see it is cycas that is the choroidal roots and pinus the phloem with companion cells which is incorrectly matched option a or option b yes yes no no which is incorrectly matched sujita so, here incorrectly matched 
cycles you told there is that bacteria which is present in the root nodules that helps in fixing nitrogen that root is called as choroidal roots whereas spinous and i told you here phloem is present whereas companion cells are not there only sieve tube is present companion cells are absent so it is option b is the wrong it is incorrectly matched okay next see here how do they reproduce one is sexual reproduction and other one is asexual reproduction asexual reproduction is by the through spores here it is through gametes okay fine see here where are spores produced again it is present within sporangia which is formed over sporophyll there are two types one is megasporophyll and then microsporophyll okay it bears ovule pollen sac like i told you you can see here cone like structures are there so the spores again over here in previous one also you saw spores were there the spores were released and then they formed gametophyte which is prothallus and after that the zygote developed embryo and then there was sporophyte right here what happens yes spore is produced in sporangia and here there are two type of sporangia one is see megasporophyll which is formed over sporophyll see how these spores are formed this is formed by sporophyll see there are two types of sporophyll in case of gymnosperm mega and micro mega is ovule i told you in this case in case of gymnosperm the female cone is larger whereas male cone is smaller i told you see here mega means it is great micro is small megasporophyll it bears sporangium it bears sporangium that nothing but ovule whereas microsporophyll it bears microsporangium that is nothing but the pollen sac okay and what happens the male and female cone produces microspores and megaspores respectively the microspores it develop into male gamete that is pollen grain and megaspores develop into ovule that is the female gamete okay and then what happens ovules are not enclosed within ovary so they are naked and after fertilization the ovule becomes seed the ovule itself becomes seed where is this happening it is happening in the cone itself and then the cone is released right the sexual reproduction it involves the formation of gametes in male and female and female cones only and how is that gamete produced it is through meiosis division and finally what happens then there is fertilization that takes place right and now see the gymnosperms are called the naked seedless plant due to the absence of naked seedless plant due to the absence of tracheids or ovary walls i told you here the ovules are not present within ovary they bear naked seeds so what what is absent over here is it tracheids or is it ovary walls is it tracheid or ovary walls it is option b ovary walls okay so that's how it is it is simple see this is how it is formed i told you know uh, the what happens is that see the microspore which developed in the micro, microsporangia and this microspore it develops into pollen grain megaspore see in gymnosperm the female cone is big megaspore which develops into ovule and this megaspore is from mega sporophyll right after that what happens the pollen grain will germinate and then there is fertilization that happens and then the seed is developed in the female cone itself and in female cone the ovule ovary is not present only ovule is there so they are naked that's why okay and here also the gametes in the same thing happens in case of sexual reproduction gametes are formed how through meiosis and again the same procedure takes place okay clear with that fine so the examples of gymnospermous cycas pinus ginkgo and cedrus okay fine 
and then the uses of gymnosperm what are the uses of gymnosperm see here you would have seen you know the tree the older trees at times you you will see that a jelly like substance coming out of the tree bark the resin the gums so that resin extract are used to treat ulcer and asthma the resin extract of the gymnosperm are used to treat ulcer and asthma okay and even the cycus and uh, tuja tuja it is also type of uh, gymnosperm they are planted in gardens and parks okay and the wood of the cedrus is used for making doors and boat as it is durable okay fine and also you know chilgoza seeds are used as dry fruits and even the cycus it eats sago and then the resin that is obtained from gymnosperm are used as adhesives as well nothing but gum like structures a gum like substance okay and the tannins are used for tanning purpose also in your leather industries and all that these are the uses of gymnosperms that's it and what is the characteristic feature of gymnosperm what is the characteristic feature of gymnosperm they bear naked seeds nothing but the seeds are not embedded within fruit that is the main characteristic feature of the gymnosperm okay fine so yeah now i want you all to answer to these questions the first one is see a plant having seeds but lacking flowers and fruits belong to does it belong to gymnosperm mosses ferns or pteridophyte see so a plant having seed but lacking flowers and fruits it is option a gymnosperm okay next mycorrhizal roots of dash are associated with some fungal symbionts so is it option a that is cycus or is it pinus or is it cedrus or is it ginkgo ginkgo which is the right answer a b c or d it is pinus okay next in gymnosperm ovules are born on is it see ovules is it megasporangia or is it archegonia or is it megasporophyll or is it nucellus option b yeah what is the answer for this a b c or d it is option c megasporophyll okay fine so yeah now this is our last division of the kingdom plantae okay that is angiosperm these are flower and fruit producing plants nothing but they are seed bearing plants and the seeds are embedded within the fruits okay which plants are called phanerogams without ovaries comment your answer in the comment section which plants are called phanerogams without ovaries it is gymnosperm only okay fine so angio meaning vessels and sperma meaning seeds okay so your plant they be of fruit and they produce seeds that are enclosed inside the fruit fine the most important and the dominant group of the plant so the fruits and flowers that you get in the market it is from angiosperms only because this is the only division in the plant kingdom which produces fruits and flowers and that is useful for us okay see here there are three one is mesophytes xerophytes and hydrophytes mesophytes are the plants that grow predominantly in terrestrial habitats 
and xerophytes are the one that survive and thrive in the deserted habitats and then your hydrophytes are the one which uh, the vegetation that are found in aquatic region before previous one ma'am what okay next see the vegetative organs are they have root stem leaf and then the reproductive organ is flower fruits seed right okay see here the roots are you all have seen it is non green in color and also they usually present underneath the surface the soil surface right and then they anchor the plants in the soil and also the roots they absorb water and minerals from the soil we all know that these are the some of the features of the angiosperms right and then here they have well defined vessels they have well defined phloem vessels in the sense they have all the four components like xylem vessels tracheids parenchyma fibers everything is present whereas companions even in phloem phloem they have sieve tube companion cells uh, phloem parenchyma phloem fiber everything is present okay and then even leaves leaves they are lateral appendages borne at the nodes of the stem see you can see there will be nodes right that line that you see on the stem that is node at the nodes you see the uh, development of leaf and it is in leaf the photosynthesis occur they are green in color because of the presence of chlorophyll pigment right they have a stalk like structure that is called petiole that is extended part is called as lamina you get to see all well developed uh, structure in this division of plant kingdom and a leaf as it has many veins and also the stronger middle vein is called as midrib so you get to see such developments in angiosperm whereas this was not seen in gymnosperm nor in any other division of the plant kingdom right and also flower is one of the important characteristic in angiosperm right that is the reproductive organ now a typical flower it has got four parts okay it has got four rolls the sorry it has got four rolls nothing but see it has got calyx right and then that is nothing but your sepal this is your calyx okay and then there is corolla that is nothing but petals okay and then it has got andrecium nothing but it is your stamen which is your male reproductive organ it has got anther and stigma it is in anther the pollen grains are generated and then gynecium nothing but your pistil the carpel see it has got stigma and then there is a long tube that is style and then comes ovary right okay the stamens are male reproductive organ like i told you which produces pollen grains whereas carpel they are female reproductive organ which bears ovule right okay so now leaves are vegetative organs in plants or is it reproductive organ in plant it is vegetative organs in plants okay fine and then the transfer of pollen from anther to stigma it can be done by wind or it can be done by insects or even bats you would have seen no these uh, honey bees also play a very important role right and during fertilization the generative cells of the pollen it divides to form two male gametes okay that is the sperm cell and two male gametes they are carried by pollen tube and are discharged into embryo sac so this is how see the pollen tube develops and then it reaches through style it passes and then it reaches the ovule the ovary okay see syngamy it is the fusion of first male gamete with the egg it results in diploid zygote which develops to form embryo okay and then the fusion of second male gamete with the secondary nucleus results in the formation of triploid primary endosperm which develops to form endosperm right and then the endosperm provides nutrition to the growing embryo 
Clear? All this you have already studied in your lower classes. It is very simple. The angel sperm is very, very simple. You know, class 10th also you had, right? And then after fertilization, what happens? The ovule develops into seed and then the ovary develops into fruit. See, in gymnosperm, what happened? There was no ovary. So, no fruit. Only seed was developed. In case of angel sperm, ovary is there. So, ovule develops into seed. Whereas, ovary develops into fruits. Okay, and then the seeds, that's what, the seeds are enclosed within the fruits, right? The embryo, that is the miniature of the plant body, right? And then the embryo has plumule. See, this is, see, it has got plumule, which develops into shoot. Further, it develops into shoot. And then it also has got radical, that further develops into root. And what is the function of cotyledon? It nourishes the developing embryo. How? By storing food. Okay, clear with that? Already you had this diagram also in your class 10th NCRT textbook itself. Right? So, this is how. Gymnosmum metas male flower, female flower, pollen grain, male gamete, ovary, ovule, right? And then fertilization, zygote formation, embryos will be present in the seed, germination and again young plant. That's it. Okay? Now, syngamy results in the formation of Syngamy results in the formation of triploid endosperm or is it diploid zygote? It is diploid zygote. Okay. Fine. Now, on the basis of number of cotyledon in the embryo, like I told you, the embryo it can have one cotyledon or two cotyledon. If it has got one cotyledon, then it is called as monocot. If it has got two cotyledon, then it is called as dicot. So, angel sperm is further divided into monocot and dicot. Okay, fine. So, the monocot, they have only one cot. So, how do you find, find out that which plant is monocot and which cot plant is dicot is? See, you can differentiate with the help of leaf itself. See, here in the leaf, you the veins are parallel like this. Whereas, here, veins are net-like structures are there. And here, vascular bundles, usually they have, com they are complexly arranged. Whereas, here, they are arranged in ring form. They follow that ring pattern. Okay. And then the roots are fibrous in case of monocot. Whereas the tape root is present in case of dicot. And here it has multiple of 3. The petals are multiple of 3. It can be 6. It can be 9. It's like that. Whereas here it is multiple of 4 or 5. The petals. That's how you can identify that whether it is a, the plant is a monocot or dicot. Okay, with the help of this you can identify. Fine? Okay. So, the example for monocot is, see your wheat, rice, maize, sugarcane, all these are example for monocot. Whereas for dicot, it is sunflower, potato, banyan tree, your mustard, all these are example for dicot. Okay? So, why do angel sperm consist the dominant land flora? Why? Can you tell me the reason why? I want you all to think and comment your answer in the comment section that why is it? It constitutes the dominant land flora. I have already explained this n number of time when I was uh, even explaining you the gymnosperm part and also angel sperm part. So, now I want you to think and answer to this question. Right? So, yeah, I have got quiz for you all and almost we have come to an end, right? So, yeah, now answer to these questions and students, in case if you have any doubt from this session, you can feel free to comment in the comment section, okay? So, yeah, first question is, what is the similarity between gymnosperm and angiosperm? The phloem of both have companion cell, is it? Is that true? Whether gymnosperm had companion cells? And now endosperm is formed before fertilization in both. Is that true? Or the origin of ovule and seed is similar in both? Or is it both have leaf, stem and root? What is the right answer for this? What is the similarity between gymnosperm and angiosperm? So your correct answer is option D. See both have well defined leaf, stem and root. Okay, 
and angiosperm is different from gymnosperm in the absence of vascular tissue naked ovule seed ovary so what is absent in gymnosperm because of which the seeds were naked they were not embedded within fruit so what was absent was that vascular tissue or is it seed or is it naked ovule or is it ovary what is the right answer it is naked ovule okay now the double fertilization is the characteristic of is it bryophyte or is it pteridophyte or is it gymnosperm or is it angiosperm what is the characteristic of like the double fertilization is the characteristic of which division in the kingdom plantae it is angiosperm okay fine yeah so we are done with this complete plant kingdom and here is the summary of the the entire session right don't worry about the notes all these notes will be provided right so yeah this is it for today's session and in the next session we'll be starting with kingdom animalia right we have completed the entire plant kingdom and if you have not yet liked this video do like and share this video with your friends as well so that it will be helpful for them also and if you all have not yet subscribed to our channel then do subscribe to our channel for much more sessions like this right so yeah thank you all and have a great day